third type of organ is the GI smooth muscle. At the GI smooth muscle, sympathetic system decreases the motility and parasympathetic system increases the motility. Again, here the receptors involved are beta 2 receptors of the sympathetic system and M3 receptors of parasympathetic system. So, beta 2 receptors always produce relaxation, thereby the motility is decreased. And parasympathetic system works by M3 receptors always produce contraction resulting in the increase in the motility. And sympathetic system can also decrease the motility by alpha 1 receptors which work by opening of the potassium channels. So we have to remember that alpha 1 receptors produce contraction of all smooth muscles except the GI smooth muscle. Because at the GI smooth muscle they work by opening of the potassium channels. Next one is the bladder. At the bladder, sympathetic system can produce the relaxation, whereas parasympathetic system can produce the contraction. The action of sympathetic system is mediated by beta 2 receptors and the action of the parasympathetic system is mediated by M3 receptors. Another one is the gallbladder. At the gallbladder, again the sympathetic system produces relaxation and parasympathetic system produces contraction. Now let us make a small generalization regarding the effect of the sympathetic and parasympathetic system on smooth muscles. At many of the smooth muscles, beta 2 receptors are present which responsible for the relaxation. So various smooth muscles like the GI smooth muscle, bladder, bronchial smooth muscle, smooth muscles at the eye, all these are relaxed by sympathetic system through beta 2 receptors. But at the vascular smooth muscle, the alpha 1 receptors are more abundant which are responsible for the vasoconstriction. Vascular smooth muscle can also express the beta 2 receptors at few of the blood vessels that are supplying to the skeletal muscle and the liver where they produce the relaxation. Apart from these blood vessels, at most of the systemic blood vessels, alpha 1 receptors are present which are responsible for contraction. In this way, sympathetic system produces relaxation of the many of the smooth muscles except the vascular smooth muscle. Now let us see what is the effect of parasympathetic system. Again at the many of the smooth muscles, M3 receptors are present where the parasympathetic system produces contraction. Just like the sympathetic system, again the parasympathetic system is having an exception at the vascular smooth muscle. At the vascular smooth muscle, again M3 receptors are present but at this time they produce a relaxation. The parasympathetic system is having no direct innervation at the vascular smooth muscle but it can release the nitric oxide at the vascular endothelium. So this nitric oxide is responsible for the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle. In this way, parasympathetic system produces the contraction of all smooth muscles except the vascular smooth muscle. Next one is the glands. Sympathetic system works by alpha 1 receptors and parasympathetic system works by M3 receptors. Even though sympathetic system do not directly act on the glands, but it decreases the blood supply. As the blood supply decreases, the secretion of the glands is going to be decreased, thereby glandular secretion is going to be inhibited. But parasympathetic system produces the excitation of the glands, which results in the secretion of the glands. So here which type of glands are involved? So nasal glands, lacrimal glands and gastric glands are affected by sympathetic and parasympathetic system in this way. But we have not observed here two other glands like sweat glands and salivary glands where these two divisions are going to produce the different actions. Next one is the genitalia. So at the erectile tissue, sympathetic system produces vasoconstriction through the alpha 1 receptors which results in the ejaculation. And parasympathetic system produces vasodilatation through the M3 receptors which produce the erection. So erection of the erectile tissue is because of the vasodilatation which is mediated by parasympathetic system. And what happens at the vagina? At the vagina, sympathetic system produces relaxation through the beta 2 receptors whereas parasympathetic system produces contraction mediated through the M3 receptors. And here again we can observe that M3 receptors produce contraction of the many of the smooth muscles except the vascular smooth muscle where they produce the vasodilatation. Now let us see the group B where both of these innervations are present with similar actions. Only one of the target here is the salivary glands. At the salivary glands both sympathetic system as well as parasympathetic system produce secretion. 
Sympathetic system can work through the alpha 1 or beta 2 receptors, whereas parasympathetic system can work through the M3 receptors. So only one of the target at the group is the salivary glands where these two divisions are working in a similar way. But here we can observe a small difference between these two actions. Sympathetic system can produce a thick and viscous saliva whereas parasympathetic system can produce a low viscous saliva. So salivary secretion is more uh, pronounced with the parasympathetic system which is less viscous but sympathetic system produce more viscous saliva. Now let us go with the group C where only sympathetic innervation is present. So one is the liver. In the liver glycogenesis is going to be increased through the alpha 1 or beta 2 receptors where the glycogen is going to be broken down to produce the glucose. And gluconeogenesis is also going to be increased at the liver so that sympathetic system can increase the glucose levels within the body. At the same time parasympathetic system is having no effect at the liver. Another organ is the adipose tissue. At the adipose tissue, sympathetic system can work through the either beta 2 or beta 3 receptors which increase the lipolysis, the breakdown of the fat. By the action of sympathetic system, the triglycerides can be converted into free fatty acids. Again, the parasympathetic system is having no innervation and no effect. Third organ is the kidney. At the kidney, the sympathetic system can act through the beta 2 receptors which increase the renin secretion. Renin is one of the important mediator which can convert the angiotensinogen to the angiotensin 1 which then can be later converted into angiotensin 2 to produce the vasoconstriction. But parasympathetic system is having no effect at the kidney. Finally another target is that sweat glands. At the sweat glands sympathetic system can produce secretion but this action is mediated through the M3 receptors. M3 receptors are the cholinergic receptors but still they can be activated by sympathetic system. So here the mediator is not the norepinephrine but the mediator is the acetylcholine. So sympathetic system can activate the sweat glands by release of the acetylcholine which act on the M3 receptors to produce the sweat secretion. At the same time parasympathetic system is having no innervation and no effect at the sweat glands. And finally the adrenal medulla. At the adrenal medulla, sympathetic system can produce a secretion where it can act through the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So here again the acetylcholine is the mediator and the adrenal medulla is supplied with a single neuron instead of a two neurons. So by stimulation of adrenal medulla, it can release both the epinephrine as well as norepinephrine. Again the parasympathetic system is having no effect at the adrenal medulla. Next one is the blood vessels. At the blood vessels, sympathetic system produces vasoconstriction mediated by alpha 1 receptors. At most of the systemic blood vessels, it produces a vasoconstriction. So this vasoconstriction results in the increase in the blood pressure which is required to combat the stressful conditions. But sympathetic system can also produce a vasodilatation where the blood supply has to be increased under stressful conditions. This vasodilatation is mediated through the beta 2 receptors and we can observe this vasodilatation at the organs like the liver, skeletal muscle where the blood supply is to be increased in order to work under stressful conditions. On the other hand, parasympathetic system can produce a vasodilatation but which is not a direct effect which is an indirect effect. So parasympathetic system is not having any innervation but still it can produce the vasodilatation. This vasodilatation is mediated by nitric oxide which is released from the endothelium by action of the parasympathetic system. Now finally let us go with the group D where only parasympathetic innervation is present. So one of the organ is the bronchioles. At the bronchioles we have already seen that sympathetic system is having no direct effect but parasympathetic system produce bronchoconstriction. The bronchoconstriction of the parasympathetic system can be produced by M3 receptors. But still sympathetic system can produce the bronchodilatation. The action of the sympathetic system is not a direct effect but still it expresses the beta 2 receptors on which the, the circulating adrenaline can work to produce a bronchodilatation. So adrenaline which is released from the adrenal medulla can go into the blood and then it can reach to the bronchioles where it can act on the beta 2 receptors to produce the bronchodilatation. So in this way even there is no direct nerve supply to the bronchioles Still the bronchioles can be dilated by circulating adrenaline. So this is one of the organ which can be classified under the group D 
where there is no sympathetic innervation but only parasympathetic innervation is present even sympathetic system is having no innervation it can produce the bronchodilatation by circulating adrenaline so just by dividing the functions of the ans into four divisions we can easily understand at which target organs both of these uh, divisions are having the nerve supply and both are working in opposite directions and at which organs both are working in a similar actions and at which organs only one division is working so at many of the organs both of the divisions are working in quite opposite actions but at the salivary glands both can produce the secretion similarly only sympathetic innervation is present at various organs like the liver kidney adrenal medulla and blood vessels and parasympathetic innervation is mainly present at the bronchioles